So here is one of the ultimate goals of this channel and for me to work on is a synth. And this one is just my first test at making sure that the 556 I have works and just kind of a general wiring and idea and everything. And then I'm gonna switch out to much tighter control because I can't keep the frequency stable or anything like that. And that's fine. This is just a first test. If you've noticed on the notes, they're actually backwards, but definitely a good start. We can kind of see how it works. I sort of tuned it beforehand. You'll actually probably see a time lapse of that. So I sort of tuned it beforehand. It's, you know, within, couple hertz, but that's fine. It's, it's good enough to show, so. Anyway, so that's kind of a basic example. So I'm going to tear this apart in a bit and kind of build it out in a separate breadboard so everything set up because my ultimate goal in my final version or whatever else is going to be very modular and all the boards can be taken out. Pretty much everything can be controlled so long as everything I have is within high enough tolerance. So that might be one of the problems here is I don't know quite the tolerance spec on these. But yeah, it works fairly simply. You're just using battery power with 6 volts. 556 is generating everything right now. I'm only using one half of it, so it's just just 555 would be plenty enough for this. It's based upon this 555 toy, toy organ circuit, so I use that in space because that's kind of, one of my favorite designs I've seen. It's very straightforward, very obvious what it's doing, and it works as a good little piano or organ. So I'll, I'll throw links into that because uh, definitely awesome and a good thing to check out, especially if you want to start out doing something like this. It's very easy. We're going to take a look at the design of my keys and we'll take a look at how they feel and sound as is with just post-it notes being used. One cool thing about these keys is using just post-it notes, it actually sounds like a mechanical keyboard. We'll look at tuning. So my oscilloscope was being a little too flaky on the readings. Lucked out that this escort multimeter I have happens to do frequency counter on it. So you can uh, sit there and hold a note and kind of see, and that should, by look at the chart, should be, uh, the one I'm going for is 292. Um, so A, of course, should be 440, or I'm using, you know, A equals 440. And I'm within the spec. You can tune it, each of the individual pots to kind of give yourself the accuracy you want. But uh, right now I'm, I'm gonna wanna switch everything out and get much finer uh, control over everything so that way it's not as far off. But so you can see that it works fairly well. So we can actually take the pot and then turn it and that'll actually change the tuning if you wanna raise or lower it. So it works fairly well. So let's take a look at uh, kind of the design of the keys I'm using right now. All right, if we uh, tear away the, the lovely post-it note uh, keyboard, we get we get the basic look at the, uh, the keyboard I have. So basically it's bent copper wires that are hovering lightly over a uh, copper uh, wire that's held down to the board with some little connectors here and there. So anyway, so it just holds it down and keeps it tight because when it was flapping around, it was too hard to keep the notes from holding on or having some sort of sustain. So basically you just bend 
the wire over and make it to where it hopefully hovers a bit and has some spring to it so you can press it down to make the the notes work and that's about it which i mean is the basic design of any switch really but this works fairly well as it gives you long throws and you can kind of do that you could kind of modify them so it's very good if you don't have any buttons or enough buttons laying around or ones that are momentary enough to be useful for a test because usually the atari punk since whatever else use just two pots to control pitch and everything else for this one i opted with the uh, the better way of having you know the individual keys for piano or keyboard and so went with the bent copper because that's just what I had you know easy access to or that many buttons without doing crazy you know trying to figure out someone's matrix on the keyboard whatever else so that's about it. So now I'm going to tear this apart and rebuild it slowly on uh, multiple different uh, modular breadboards and get that going. So here's kind of a look of the upgraded board. So it's now on a much smaller breadboard and it's more streamlined. In the final version I'd actually have just a row of header connectors that has all of your I.O. and that way you can kind of use it as like a expansion board or something if you want to call it that. So anyway, you have your battery clip again, which gives you the, the rails, which I actually just used the pre-labeled ones they had because why not? And so now I've got this keyboard jumper and then speaker outputs over here. So that's that, still using just half the 556. It's just acting as a single 555. And I can kind of show you how that goes. Here's the new keyboard. And you just take your keyboard connector and plug it right in. And then we're gonna give ourselves some power. And then next, I just need to turn on some speakers. All right. And I have it fully tuned, thanks again to that uh, multimeter I was using earlier, just to act as a, a regular tuner. Uh, now the uh, pots are much more accurate about everything. So they're still the, the same series way. So if I change this one, I'll change all of them, but that's fine because it allows you to do So it allows you to do that still, uh, you can kind of get that. Whereas if you were to just run resistance from the power rail over to each one, it gets kind of flaky and weird, needs some diodes, and you know, it gets more complicated. That's why we had monophonic synths long before they had polyphonic synths, and that's fine. I'm very quite happy with this, so long as you can. If you also notice, the range is in the correct order and much higher now, so we can go all the way from C to C. So it's nice that these would fit across here, but anyone that uses these know that that doesn't actually work because of how these are wired. Ta-da, it works. Well, it works within some margin. We'll get back to this project later.